Hello everybody, let's get straight to it. In this video, I would like to review new revenue recognition functionality that became publicly available in Dynamics 365 for finance and operation. Uh, we will be building on on the video that was released by Microsoft during the Business Application Summit. That video by Christy Sillinger explains greatly how the process of revenue recognition is done, but it doesn't really cover the setups that uh, would need to be in place for that process to happen. So this video will concentrate on the configurations, setups that you would need to have in place before you can go through the entire process. I strongly recommend watching that video from Christy. All right, the first thing we need to do is navigate to our uh, revenue recognition module. It is right here, so it gets its new uh, dedicated module. And first thing we'll need to do is to define revenue schedules. So here I have two. You see that I have occurrences defined as 12, and then recognition basis are set by occurrences, and recognition convention is set for the first of the next month. So the revenue schedule, which is called test, is the one we will be using. If you would like to see how many periods and the distribution for each period, you can click on that revenue schedule details, and it will show you the 12 periods that you define, 12 occurrences, and then equally spread out for each uh, period. You can change that percentage manually, but at the end, the overall percentage would have to be equal to 100. The second setup that we would need to have in place, which will be an optional setup, is your revenue prices. Christy kind of says that the price on the sales order does not necessarily have to be equal to the price that you recognize for that item, uh, revenue price. Uh, the total, of course, would have to match. So the total revenue that you recognize would have to be matching to the invoice total, but the distribution between the items on that uh, order can be different. So you will see that I have set up three uh, prices for uh, Three items. The item 4401 is a stock item, and the last two items, which is a cold service and warranty, are uh, items that are service items. And I will be talking about what that revenue, the effect of that revenue allocation price it will have on our allocation routine. All right, so now once we have these schedules and uh, prices defined, we all need to link them to the item. So for that purpose, we will navigate to the release product or we can click on the one of the items right here. Once we unreleased product form, we can scroll all the way down to see a new section that is called revenue recognition. In this section, you can actually link a schedule to a specific item, right? When we were creating schedule, it was not really linked to a specific release product, but by going and selecting a schedule right here, we are linking that release product to that specific release, release schedule. And then this section actually talks about, is that item eligible for revenue allocation or the price allocation? So in this case, you will see that all the three items that I will be using during this demonstration are eligible. So you have to check that checkbox to yes. And then there is a revenue type, which Christy is talking about, because the price allocation differs if it's an essential item, non-essential item, etc., or the PCS item, as she described. So again, just go back to the video and uh, watch what she's, what she's saying about that. All right, we don't want to exclude the, this item from carve-outs because that would prevent the price uh, uh, allocation to be actually happening. All right, so that's uh, one thing. Here's what we can associate. You can also go to the cell tab right here and you can check the revenue prices. So remember what we have done for all the prices and here we will filter that list to only show you the revenue prices specific to that product. And we can create a new prices from here by clicking on a new button. The next thing we need to talk about is um, number sequences. So for that purpose, we will navigate to general ledger parameters and open the number sequence tab. Then, if we scroll all the way down, we will see a new revenue reallocation ID, and I linked a, a test 111 number sequence to it. This uh, number sequence will be responsible for generating numbers for our reallocation IDs, and I will show you how it actually plays out when we want to reallocate our revenue across multiple sales orders. So you have to have that number sequence defined in order for you not to get this error. Then we will click on the Revenue Recognition tab here, 
and you see that I have created a revenue recognition journal name. So you have to have a journal name to actually recognize your revenue. The system will generate an expected revenue schedule. Once you invoice the sales order, it will generate a revenue schedule. But this revenue schedule can be on hold and it's basically, it's, it's not posted automatically. So for you to process this schedule and post these uh, entries in your GL, you would need to have a dedicated journal type, which is called uh, Revenue Recognition Journal. Here I click on it, I will show you some details. It's a fairly basic uh, setup as for any journal uh, that you have. And of course you have to select the voucher series to generate your voucher IDs. And you can see the type here is Revenue Recognition. And the last piece of setup before we actually gonna go into the sales store itself would be the postings. So they have introduced a number of different deferred revenue uh, postings that you can either open from an item group or from the inventory postings. So here, that's where you can define a deferred revenue, uh, partial invoice revenue, deferred cost of goods sold, etc. So you have to have these accounts in place for you not to get the errors when you're trying to invoice a sales order. All right, so now let's just kind of see how it actually works. So we will open a sales order form. And what I have done here is I have defined this sales order number 18. And you will see that you will see that I have added two service items to it. So one is called service, another one is warranty. So a few things that I work here. So if you go to the setup, you see that the start date and end date and the occurrences have been copied. But how did they get there? Well, I mean, if you scroll all the way to the right, and you can personalize that form, of course, to to have it closer to the left side, you will see that there is a revenue schedule that is associated with each sales order line. That revenue schedule has actually defaulted from the released product setup that I showed you. Let me just show you how it works. If I create a new item, and you, for example, select 4401, you tab out. If you scroll all the way to the right, you see the revenue schedule has been defaulted from the released product. But what I've noticed is that the contract terms section is grayed out. It's not populated. When you save it, you will see that it's not grayed out anymore, but defaults have not been copied. So the start date and the end date and number of occurrences have not been copied. So I think it's a small bug that will be definitely released, uh, resolved by Microsoft later on. So what I have to do in order for me to populate these dates from the, release, uh, from the revenue schedule is have to kind of select the schedule again. And once you do that, you will see that these dates and their currents have been populated. All right, so let me just remove that line for now. Now, uh, as Christy mentions um, in her video is that in order for you to see the expected revenue recognition schedule, you have to confirm it. So it's only done to just for you to see that expected schedule. If you skip the uh, uh, confirmation, sales or confirmation step, you would still generate that schedule. But if you want to review it before you post an invoice, you would need to go through a sales or confirmation step. So let us do that. I'm going to go and I'm going to click on confirm sales order. Once that is done, we can go and look at the expected schedule, right? It's not the committed schedule yet, but it's an expected schedule. All right. You can see that it generated 13 occurrences for my first item, which is scroll to the right, right here is the service. And then we have 13 occurrences for the second sales order line for the second item, which is a warranty. And you can see that the price here is that was defined is 1,000 that we will need to recognize across 13 periods for the service item and $500 that we will need to recognize across the same 13 periods occurrences for the warranty item. Now, if you look at the uh, revenue price allocation, so let's take a, so let's take a look how we, can, how, how we can distribute these 1,500 across these two items differently than it is spread out right now, which is just based on the price itself. So that's where we have to go and look at the revenue prices here. And what I've done here is I define the service revenue allocation price to be matching to its list price and the warranty revenue allocation price to be matching to its list price as well. So if you think about it, our revenue price equals to the list price, which kind of makes, defeats the purpose of the entire allocation because really you want to allocate it the same way it is allocated right now. So if you click on the update revenue price allocation, so that's what will regenerate uh, this uh, price allocation section and click on 
section right here, you will see there are no entries here, right? Because again, the allocation is exactly the same as it is uh, originally, and there is no need to generate any records to show a different allocation. What I also say, and that's discussed in the video as well, is that if you have only one item in your sales store, you, that section will be blank as well. Why? Because there is you can you cannot allocate revenue differently if you have only one item. There are no multiple items that you can allocate the revenue across, right? And another thing that I'll say is if you exclude these items by checking uh, this exclude from carve out uh, checkbox, this will effectively say this item should not be subject to reallocation. So if you have two items and you exclude it two items from reallocation, then of course that section will be blank. And if you have only one item excluded, then the reallocation, uh, one of two items excluded, then basically you will have the same allocation as you have originally. All right, so that's, let's go back here. Let's check our price allocation section again. You see it's blank. So for me to change it, I need to have my revenue price different from my list price, or the one that we see in the sales floor. So what I will do here is I will, for example, for the warranty, I'll change my revenue allocation price to 501. I'll save these changes. And now, uh, in order for me to see the results of that change, I would have to do something else because right now I do not see it. I have to click on that update revenue price allocation and that will update that section right here. So I will just go in here to see a different allocation. And now I can see that my uh, revenue out to recognize has actually shifted now. So I have to recognize uh, 1,033 cents for the service item and then 499.67 uh, for our uh, warranty item. Again, how the math works, how there's a factor that is used to calculate the price, you can look at the video from, uh, from Christy. All right, so now we have a slightly different allocation of our 1500s of revenue that we'll need to recognize eventually. So another way that you can do, and that was uh, also discussed, is uh, you, so you can allocate uh, the revenue across uh, items from different sales orders. Right. The example that Christy brings up is that if a customer decided to buy another additional service that was not part of the same obligation of the same contract of, uh, initially, uh, then you can just go and select that sales order as long as it's for the same customer. So for us to do that, we will need to click on that pre-allocate price with new sales order lines. And that's when, if you do not have that number sequence that is responsible for generating the reallocation IDs, you will get an error. So you have to have that number sequence in place, assigned, before you can click on here. So I'm going to do that. And you can see that here's my uh, reallocation ID that was generated by the system. And now it actually highlights the order that I'm on and shows me two items and the current uh, uh, revenue that will be uh, recognized or allocated across two items that I currently have. And now I can go and select an additional uh, items from a different sales order. So this was from the order number 18, and this is an order number 19. You see that the orders are only for specific customers. So I'm going to select that order number 19. And you see that it brought two additional items uh, from order number 19. Here's my service item again, and then I see that stock item of 4401. And you see the revenue allocation is basically the same as it was originally on those two individual orders. But now we need to reallocate across four items from two different sales orders. For us to do that, we will click on update reallocation, and that will change the reallocated amount. You see it has changed it here. And if I would like to have a more details uh, by looking at it, I would just click on revenue location, and that's basically showing me all four items, and it shows me the revenue that will, will be reallocated so back here, will be reallocated across this two different sales orders. Okay, of course, we will still be invoicing separately, so you can uh, do recognition of that revenue, putting into deferred revenue uh, order by order, it will not happen at the same time, but they prices that were used to calculate that revenue uh, are calculated here. All right, so for me to commit to that, I would need to click on the process and that will actually go and include these items. I will select the date, which will be the today's date. And now if we look at our revenue price allocation section, we will see four items from two different sales orders and revenue to recognize would be the one that we just saw in the previous one. All right. So the next step is to go and invoice that sales order. 
So I'm posting in for all because I have two service items on this sales order. I don't have any packing slips. If you don't have those deferred uh, revenue accounts set up, you will get an error here. So that's why it's important to take care of the, of the posting section before actually going and posting the sales order invoice. So we have the order invoiced. And if we go back to our manage tab, we will see that we don't no longer have an access to expected revenue schedule. Now we have our revenue recognition schedule itself. So basically from it up. And we can see here it shows us two items that we have on that sales order. And we see that the amounts are basically the ones that we recalculated based on reallocation across four items from these two orders. So that was our order number 18. So the next step would be to actually go and review those entries centrally and then process them by posting a journal. So for that purpose, we will navigate to our revenue recognition workspace. Click on revenue recognition here. And here I have my list of unprocessed revenue recognition schedules. If you scroll see, if you scroll down here, you see that all the ones for the order number 18, that's the one we just invoiced, are on hold. And the reason being here is if we look at our revenue schedules, I have checked the automatic hold checkbox. So what that means is every entry that is generated for that schedule will be automatically placed on hold. So I have to make us uh, have to make a separate step of removing them from hold. All right, so I will click on see more. So that will give me a more detailed view where I can filter on different orders because really what, I'm want, what I want to do here is to filter it on a specific order 18. So I filtered the list that contains all unprocessed uh, entries for the schedules, only the ones that belong to a specific sales order. You see all of them are on hold and you see the prices we already discussed and we see that it has 13 periods for each and we know the total amount that we will be recognizing each month. And you see the first entry is actually at the beginning of the next month. Why? Is because our revenue schedule, let's go back here, was set up to recognize revenue at the first of the next month. We are in October 4th right now, and that's why the first entry is actually for the first of November, and we can see it right here. And if we want to, we can filter it by, or sort it by item. So in this case, I have my 13 entries from here to here for my service items, and we can look at it a bit more in detail. So starting on November 1st, then December 1st, and then all the way to November 1st again. And you see the revenue recognized is split equally among these periods. And if we do the math here, we we'll multiply this 6790 by 13, we will we'll see that it's really going to equal to the amount that we need to recognize overall, which will be $999.71. Uh, and that's a question for you. Uh, I'm not really sure why the system generated 13 occurrences. Uh, so the system generated 13 entries starting from the 1st of next month, which is November 1st, and ending the November 1st of 2020. But my schedule was actually set up to have 12 occurrences. And if we look at the schedule itself here, we see that the percentage allocated is 8.33 across all periods. So I'm not sure, and maybe that's a question for you guys, for those guys who are watching this channel, is to why the system actually generated 13 uh, entries versus just 12 based on that schedule. All right. So the first thing we will need to do for us to move on to the last step, which will be generating that revenue recognition journal and posting it. First step before that, we will need to remove these entries from hold because remember, they've been automatically placed on hold just because our schedule was set up to do so. So I will select all of my uh, entries for the order number 18, and I'm going to click on remove hold. Once you do that, you will see that the on hold checkbox has disappeared. The next step is to, for us to create a journal. So you don't have to highlight multiple records here, which was I initially thought I have to highlight all the records that I would like to include. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is remember is the last date for your uh, revenue recognition, uh, which is November 1st of 2020 next year. So for me to do that, I will click on create journal. I will create my uh, revenue recognition will be up to 20. Uh, November, uh, let's go to seven. 
So I'm actually including other entries up to 7th of November of 2020. And then I'm going to click OK. So what I expect to have here is 13 records for one item, 13 for another. OK, so now we have 54 records included. Why? It's because it actually included some uh, entries from different sales stores, even though I had a list that only shows me uh, the entries from one sales order, but I had multiple unprocessed, other unprocessed uh, schedules and I actually included those just because they were within this date range that I specified. So now I have this uh, 54 transactions are being added to the journal 636. And that's a revenue recognition journal that I showed you that we assigned uh, in a general uh, ledger parameters. All right, so let's go back to our module and look at the journal entries, revenue recognition journal. We see our journal right here. We can click on lines and that will show us the decals, basically the general ledger posting that will be posted. And those are not the ones that we are interested in, but here are the ones, 76, 76, 76. Of course, you don't want to probably post this revenue recognition that far ahead. You would probably recognize it as a periodic job month over month, but it's really up to you how you can figure that. So you can always go and uh, do periodically, as I said. But you just kind of for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm doing it uh, for all the periods to show you how it actually works. And the last step for us will be actually going and posting that journal. What I did not show here is it's going to re remove our deferred revenue, reverse our deferred revenue posting that we're generating during the sales or invoice posting, and it's going to go and post it into the revenue account instead. So it's going to do that reversal that was that happened during the invoice posting, and it's going to do the posting into the revenue account. All right, that is all I wanted to cover today. Again, I think it's a great addition by Microsoft. Yeah, I think that, that IP, that functionality was actually procured from a partner. Uh, that functionality of revenue recognition is of course available on the projects itself. So when you're doing a project invoicing, um, very much uh, a needed addition. Uh, and again, my uh, recommendation for people who would like to learn and get familiar with this functionality in Dynamics 365 would would be to watch the video from Christy Sillinger uh, that I will post a link for uh, in the description of my video. And then, of course, if you have any questions, please uh, contact us directly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.